when designing a speaker or adding subwoofers to your system, the question that I get asked the most is how much more SPL am I going to get by just adding one more driver? And you can hear all different answers across the internet, anything from six decibels all the way down to zero decibels added. Who's right? And is it possible that maybe, just maybe, that you could add another driver to your system and not gain any more output? Now, if you think you already know the answer, throw it down in the comments section. But for everyone else, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's start with a simplified scenario. Let's say that you want to add another woofer or subwoofer to your system and you already have an amplifier. Now, this amplifier has a fixed wattage and you're not going to be adding any more wattage to the system. Now, when you add that driver, keep in mind that we say adding another woofer or subwoofer, mid-range, whatever it is that we're talking about, we're just saying that it's going to play the exact same bandwidth. Not only is it playing the exact same bandwidth as it was before, but it's going to be the exact same driver, subwoofer, woofer, whatever. We might also do this when we're designing something like an MTM or a TMM, where we have two mid-ranges or two woofers that are playing the exact same frequency. The question is, how much SPL do we gain? In this type of scenario, there are a few basic rules that we can keep in mind for figuring out at least how much more theoretical SPL we'll gain fairly easily. In any of these scenarios, we're going to be talking about if you add just a single woofer, single subwoofer, whatever, we're going to add an additional three decibels. That'd be great. That's all we need to know. Unfortunately, that's not all you need to know. See, in our scenario, we have an amplifier that's outputting the same amount of wattage. And an amplifier's output is directly related to the impedance of a driver. Stated differently, the higher the impedance, the less wattage you get out of the driver. And the lower the impedance, the more wattage you get out of the amplifier. So for example, let's assume that each of our woofers are four ohm. We can wire these in one of two ways. We can wire these in series, and when wired in series, you double the impedance. Or in this case, the final impedance is now eight ohm. We could also wire these in parallel, which would have our impedance. In this case, that would give us a final impedance of two ohm. How does that affect the amplifier? You see, when we wire the subwoofers in parallel for a final impedance of two ohm, the amplifier theoretically doubles the power of what it would have been able to produce at four ohm, meaning that doubling the power increases the SPL by three decibels. So the rule here is doubling the power or having the impedance will give you an additional plus three decibels. So by adding the second woofer in parallel, you're going to get plus six decibel increase in your final SPL, plus three for adding the woofer and plus three for having your impedance. Now, on the other hand, if we were to wire those same subwoofers in series, we double our impedance. So we go from four ohm to eight ohm. In essence, we know that our amplifier's wattage output is directly related to the impedance of that driver. And we know that doubling the impedance actually has the amount of power the subwoofer C. Since that's the case, we actually lose three decibels of SPL. In other words, you double your impedance or have your power, you lose three decibels of output. In this scenario, adding the woofer got us plus three decibels and wiring in series got us negative three decibels, meaning we have a net SPL gain of zero decibels. The obvious question here is, why wouldn't everyone just wire everything in parallel? You know, that's a good question, but you have to remember that every amplifier has an impedance rating on it and it can only play so low of an impedance. For most home amplifiers, for example, the impedance is typically eight ohm or even four ohm. In car audio, you can usually go all the way down even to half ohm, depending on which amplifier you get. And that's why matching the impedance of your speakers with your amplifier is so important. If you don't, you could lose out on a lot of your SPL. So when you're wiring those woofers together, you have to pay attention to what your amplifier can and cannot do. If it can't run the impedance that you want to run, you might want to look at getting different speakers or a different amplifier. Speaking of amplifiers, we start off assuming that you have an amplifier that has a fixed amount of wattage. But what if we doubled that wattage? Or in other words, what if we had a two channel amplifier and each channel had the exact same amount of wattage and all we did is add another woofer? What happens then? Well, our impedance is going to stay the same, so we'll get a net zero there but we're adding a woofer, so we'll get the plus three decibels. And we'll also get plus three decibels for doubling our wattage. So total increase of theoretical SPL of six decibels. It really is that simple. If you can remember these rules, you will always be able to figure out your theoretical SPL increase. I do know that it's not always easy to know how to wire your speakers for any given impedance. Thankfully, the people at Crutchfield have created a tool that will help you with just that. I'll link that down below, and if you decide to buy some drivers from Crutchfield, make sure to use that link. It's an affiliate link, and that money does go back to help 
getting more videos out like this and just helps out the channel. So I'd appreciate that. Now, if you like content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video. Otherwise, this is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.